Hey guys, welcome back, I'm the Metal Jesus, and today we're gonna to be talking about the original Xbox. Specifically, we're gonna be talking about games that were exclusive to it. These are games that did not come out on any other system. You collectors are gonna love this. Let's take a look. Before we get started, I did want to point out that there was about 200 games that came out exclusively for the original Xbox, meaning they didn't come out on the GameCube or the PlayStation 2. Now there is a small percentage of them that also came out on the PC, so just be aware that I'm primarily focusing on the console side of things, although I'll try to point that out as I go. Also, you know, there are 200 games, uh, I don't have all of them, but I have enough to where I have to break this up into two parts, so I'm going to go really quickly through these this is meant to just be an overview and be a little snapshot for you collectors let's go so i'm starting this video off right with ninja gaiden black for the original xbox quite possibly one of the greatest games on this system and the thing that that this game always reminds me of is i used to work with this guy named jeremy and when this game first came out he made it his his mission in life to try to beat this game, it was so freaking hard. And I remember every day at work, he'd come in and he was defeated, man. He was, he was beaten down. And then finally, one day, days and weeks later, he came in and he was so, he was glowing. He was so happy he beat this game. Definitely a hard game, but all, also just so freaking awesome. A must own for any original Xbox fan. Next up is Conquer Live and Reloaded. Now, I was really looking forward to this game when it came out because I did not play the original Nintendo 64 version and Microsoft bought Rare and then basically decided to do a big update to this game. And it's actually pretty cool. For one thing, the visuals just got a huge update coming to the Xbox, and you can really tell. It's light years better than the N64 version. Also, they added a full multiplayer mode, which is pretty cool. Now, the downside is some of this game supposedly was censored. Now, I'm not the best person to talk about that because I didn't really play the original very much, but that's definitely a downside. That said, this game is highly playable, very fun, and really collectible. Here's a game I covered previously on a Hidden Gems video, and this is Breakdown by Namco, and it only came out on the original Xbox. This is a really kind of unique first-person action game, very unusual for its time. Microsoft recently announced that they are going to bring back the Phantom Dust series, and that is good news for people who love this game. This is actually created for Japan by the director of the Panzer Dragoon series. Now think of this as sort of a pseudo card-based action strategy game. You collect 300 different skills to battle against other players. It's very addicting. As a matter of fact, I have a good friend of mine who just was obsessed with this game when it first came out. So it's pretty cool that Microsoft is gonna bring it back for the Xbox One. You may be surprised to learn that I am a huge Buffy the Vampire Slayer fan. I love the TV show. Well, the first Buffy game to come out on consoles was exclusive to the original Xbox. I was just as surprised to learn this as you. Now, it's very cool and it's actually a really good game. This is followed up by a sequel on multiple systems called Chaos Bleeds, also another really good game. Ah, the infamous Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball game with their amazing booby physics. Yes, this game was fairly notorious when it first came out. The irony is, is that it's actually a fairly decent volleyball game. I know, I know, people just read Playboy for the articles. That's kind of what I'm saying right here. But seriously, it's actually not a bad game. And since we're talking volleyball, well, here is an exclusive on the Xbox. This was a rental only from Blockbuster set in hell as a side mission to the full Outlaw Volleyball game. So yes, you could only get this game from Blockbuster. Now, what made this interesting is that the characters have different outfits. They have devil horns, they have wings. Again, not an amazing kind of volleyball game, but still kind of interesting. 
And speaking of exclusives, here's a game called Sneakers. Now this was only sold at Toys R Us in North America. It was primarily designed for kids. Not really interesting. Kingdom Under Fire Heroes and the Crusaders are some of the most well-reviewed games on the system. People love these games. These games are all about hack and slash, but they're surrounded by an amazing heavy metal soundtrack. Oh my God, the soundtrack is so, so awesome. Also, it has great gameplay. As a matter of fact, some gamers consider this to be a really interesting mix of Dynasty Warriors and also more traditional strategy games like Warcraft. Here's kind of an interesting little game that probably only me and two other people own. It's called Kakucho Chojin Back Alley Brutal. Now this is a Japanese fighting game, very similar to like maybe Mortal Kombat. And it just had fantastic graphics for the time. Kind of ho-hum gameplay, not really impressive, but again, it only came out on Xbox, so it's kind of cool. Here's an interesting game called Blinks the Time Sweeper. Now, this is one of the few Xbox-only 3D platformers that came out on the system. Didn't come out on anything else. These got actually really great reviews. Now, this spawned a sequel, but the original is the one you want. This is the good one. I covered the Otagi series in a previous Hidden Gems video, but I want to talk about it here too because these are just amazing hack and slash action games from From Software published by Sega. These games are most notable for having really excellent gameplay, but also destructible environments and lots of stages to explore. The sequel is actually considered more refined, so I would say go for that one if you're new to the series, but both of them can be pretty hard to find and are very collectible. Quantum Redshift might look a little bit like Wipeout. Well, do you know why that is? It's because the original developer of Wipeout also created this game exclusively for the original Xbox. This is a pretty decent futuristic racing game and I like it quite a bit, but really its standout feature is, is that it's a showcase for the Xbox's powerful graphics at the time. I mean, this game looked amazing when it first came out and really showed off that console. However, the game is pretty tough, man. It's, it's it's tough as balls, let's be honest here. But you can slow the game down by lowering the difficulty setting, which is which is kind of what I need, because I'm, I'm kind of a wuss. The House of the Dead 3. That's my, that's, that's my kind of evil voice. So anyways, this is a fantastic light gun shooter game that only came out on the original Xbox, and it looks amazing. But eventually this game did see a release on the PlayStation 3, so you can get it there if you want to in the next generation. Also, there was a Wii version that mixes up the, the second and the third game. But if you want the original, you gotta get it on the Xbox. Here's another Xbox exclusive called Whacked. This is a game show where characters compete for prizes. You hit each other with objects such as missiles, hammers, pitchforks, so much more. You also play dodgeball, king of the hill, and deathmatch. This game is very cartoony and completely over the top and surprisingly fun. Zynite is a pretty interesting little shoot 'em up that came out on the Xbox. Not a lot of people talk about this game, honestly. I don't know what it is about it. It didn't, I don't think it sold very well but it's pretty interesting. It has amazing graphics. It's got a really interesting story and I like it quite a bit. Now, I believe there were two sequels for this game, one on the PlayStation 2 and also on the PSP. So it did live on, but sadly not a lot of people know about it. Here's a bit of an interesting game from the original creator of Tomb Raider back in the day. They brought Galleon to the original Xbox. Now this game was supposed to be probably bigger than it ended up being, primarily because it's not really that good, but it is only available on the Xbox. The Xbox also got its very own Superman game, The Man of Steel. This did not come out on any other systems. And you know, there's really not a lot of great Superman games, and this one isn't that great either, but it, honestly, it's not that bad. I mean, it's definitely playable, it has a pretty cool story. It follows the uh, the Superman Y2K storyline with Brainiac. Also has really nice, large, detailed environments. Here's a Japanese-developed mech game called Mirakumo Renegade Mech Pursuit. 
This is from software. These are the same people that made Dark Souls and Armored Core. Now I'll be honest, this isn't a great mech game, but it looks good and it can be found relatively cheap. Here's a role-playing game that came out on the Xbox. Now it's not great, but it is exclusive to this system. Probably the, the one standout feature for this game is that it has original music by composer Jeremy Soule, who created a bunch of great soundtracks, including The Secret of Evermore, Icewind Dale, and also Skyrim. Here is one of the masterpieces on the original Xbox that is Panzer Dragoon Orta. And my God, this game is so freaking good. If you have a Sega Saturn, I don't need to tell you just how amazing these on-rail shooter games are. And we were so lucky to get one on the original Xbox. This looks and plays so well. This is such a fantastic game. And as a special bonus, there was a special edition Xbox that was released. Very limited numbers. Oh my God, I'd love to own one of these. Here we have Mech Assault 2 Lone Wolf. This is the sequel to the fantastic original game. As a matter of fact, my buddy Drunken Master Paul was obsessed with these games when they first came out. They're definitely a nice mix of arcade and simulation. They, they, they definitely focus more on the fun. So a really great game for the original Xbox. If you like mechs, definitely check it out. Here's a game that I was surprised how much I enjoyed and that's called Brute Force. And yes, despite the fairly generic name and cover, this game does rock. This is a third person action shooter with pretty great controls and gameplay. It was created by the team that was also responsible for Wing Commander and Star Lancer, some really amazing games on the PC. This is considered to be a mix of maybe say, you know, XCOM and Halo. I really like it, so definitely check it out. You can get it really cheap. Voodoo Vince is a game that comes up often in Xbox Collector's best of lists, and there's a good reason for that. This game got great reviews. It's definitely a much loved platformer, it has really hilarious characters, fun gameplay, uh, great graphics. I mean, it's just a must own for all Xbox fans. For you guys who have been watching my channel for a while, you know that I really enjoyed the SSX snowboarding series, and I don't really dive deep into some of the more simulation snowboarding games, but Amped and Amped 2 on the original Xbox are fantastic games. This game feels like a nice mix of simulation and arcade. The, the level design is really cool, and the graphics look great. Ah yes, Death Row. This is a well-loved and reviewed game only for the original Xbox. Think of this game as a futuristic sports game that combines elements of hockey, soccer, rugby, and even basketball. As a matter of fact, some people consider this to be the spiritual successor to Speedball 2, which was a game that I absolutely loved back in the day. Here we have Dungeons and Dragons Heroes. This is another hack and slash game with role-playing elements. Now this was originally supposed to come out on the PlayStation 2, but it got canceled, so you can only find it here. A lot of people compare this to Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance, and that game is awesome, and this game is really good too. And finally, for this video, we have a game called Spike Out Battle Street. This is a Japanese design game that features hand-to-hand -hand melee combat in a gang war. This is definitely considered a hidden gem for beat-em-up fans by a company that created a ton of Dragon Ball Z games. All right, guys, I told you it was gonna go really fast and I have so many more games to show you. Can't wait to get to part two. As always, I wanna thank you for watching my channel. Thanks very much for subscribing. Take care. Darth Vader wants to know, what games do you think should be in part two? Let me know down in the comments below.